Hey guys, Chris Bill, Comic Book University, and today I'm going to be talking about Spider-Man and his first meeting with the Scorpion, alright? I got my Spider-Man shirt on, I think we're ready to go, yeah? So check it out. His first appearance, alright? First off, don't forget to check out uh, Scorpion Explained in a Minute, alright? That's the quick, brief, dirty rundown of everything you need to know about who the Scorpion is. But as far as his origin story, the first one... His first appearance was in Amazing Spider-Man issue number 19. That's back in 1964, uh, December of 1964, right? But that's uh, specifically McDonald Gargan, all right, or Mac Gargan. That's his first appearance. Uh, but as the Scorpion with the actual suit on, that'd be a month later, which would have been in January of 65 and issue number 20 of Amazing Spider-Man. So both could be considered a first appearance-ish. Anyway... Uh, he was also, um, what do you call it, Venom much later on, right? In the Dark Reign. So, yeah. <laughs> Marvel Knights actually did that. So, anyway, uh, what we have here is Spider-Man, uh, this issue number 19, he's, he's being followed by some dude. He doesn't know who this guy is or what he's all about, but as Peter Parker, he's being followed all over the place. Now, in the next issue... Uh, you know, he's doing his own thing over there. In the next issue, he is only dealing with going to and from wherever, and this guy is still following him. Um, he sees him follow him all the way to his home. He looks out the window, the dude's hiding in the trees. Then the guy goes to leave. So he dresses himself up as Spider-Man to go out and follow the guy. He goes to a phone booth. Again, this is 1964, 1965, all right? There are no cell phones. None of that stuff is uh, is what's up. So he goes to a, a phone booth. He sees the dude, and he's, like, you know, making his call. It's like, what the heck? He couldn't hear what was being said. So then he realizes he's going back to his home. Shoot. Not the easiest thing to do because where he's living in Queens, it's not those tall buildings that he can just get into, you know. So he's got to be careful. He's got to walk across phone lines and get into his house, you know. Uh, so he goes and he jumps in, but he's got to go around. Uh, in order to get back in, Gargan is coming right up and he's like, shoot, I need some kind of a distraction so that he won't see me go back inside of this apartment. He's going to know right away, you know, my secret. Maybe, maybe he doesn't know what my secret is right now. So let's see what's up. So what he does is he actually takes his uh, his webbing and fashions a bat, a big old bat, like about that big, to glide down whoosh, right past Gargan. He's like, what is this? Now, apparently it's going to dissolve into just, you know, basic webbing in just a couple of moments. That's the way they designed it. Okay. Uh, he would not keep this ability for very long. Um, back in the old days of comics, much like, you know, like uh, Phantom, a Phantom X, Phantoma. Phantoma and, uh, you know, characters along those lines, Stardust, you would just, and with Superman, you literally just give them whatever powers they need in order to <laughs> complete the mission, right? So that's the reason why some of these characters would improve in abilities. After a while, they start to actually regulate, at least in Marvel, they start to really regulate on what the characters could do, you know? Um, Tony Stark just, oh, I've got a device for that, <laughs> you know? Batman would essentially always have his uh, omni-plot uh, device belt on that he could just reach in. Okay, the, we got to end the comic soon, so I just happen to have the perfect device in here. Ha <laughs> ha. So, yeah, his webbing would not be able to do all sorts of things like that for long. Um, in fact, not too long after Ditko would leave, and uh, John Romita Sr. would actually come in. Anyway, so he does his bat and he jumps in. He accidentally bumps into the wall because he overshoots his, his landing. Aunt May comes up, he throws on a bathrobe and pulls off his uh, mask really quick. Doesn't he have time to pull off his gloves, right? And Aunt May, oh, are you okay? She's got a mean look on her face. Okay, at this point, we're going to transition into J. Jonah Jameson. He's sitting there having a conversation with himself, basically. Uh, all the greatest villains monologue, right? So, says the guy who's sitting in a room by himself. <laughs> anyway, so... Uh, he's sitting there looking like, you know, the scientific stuff that's coming into the paper that he's got to approve. He's like, why do these guys always send me this stuff? I don't care about any of the scientific stuff. None of that concerns me. Only beating up the webhead is what bothers, you know, what's on my mind all the time. So, you know, how come they don't have something with, you know, they got the scientists and all the proofs and the things he's able to do. Like, what is this, mut mutating uh, things and, and making fish who can breathe air and rats who could swim? Like, you know, who, who needs stupid stuff like that? And he's like, wait a second. What if this guy can make some kind of a, a serum that would be able to give somebody the ability to beat Spider-Man? If there was somebody who was stronger than Spider-Man, I would be a hero. And Spider-Man, that menace, would be off the streets. Yeah, he's so selfless. So anyway, he decides, you know, listen, Gargan, get back. Next time Gargan uh, calls in, Gargan, get back here, Mac, because uh, I got a new job for you. 
actually convinces, the, and, and mind you, Mech Gargan, that's who this dude is, all right? That's the Scorpion. That's the dude who's been, the, uh, you know, following uh, Peter Parker all over the place. Um, he, he's actually a private eye. The reason why uh, J. Jonah Jameson ordered him to go after him is because ever since issue number two of the uh, Amazing Spider-Man, which would be the third appearance of Spider-Man, Amazing Fantasy number 15, Spider-Man number one, where he went up against Fantastic Four and all that stuff, right? And then Amazing Spider-Man number two, where he would fight the Vulture, all right? Uh, obviously, this uh, whole video is coming up because of um, Spider-Man Homecoming. Why am I mostly talking about the Scorpion? Let's just give you an idea that uh, stay until the after credits, all right? You never leave a freaking Marvel movie until after the after credits. So <laughs> here we have uh, Gargan is, is being told, you know, listen, um, I need you to figure out who or how Peter Parker is getting all these amazing pictures. Because way back in Spider-Man number, Amazing Spider-Man number two, he gets these cool pictures of, of um, the Vulture, and he gets these pictures of Spider-Man beating up the Vulture. So he, he sells them to J, uh, J. Jonah Jameson. His original intent is, hey, this guy's always bad-mouthing Spider-Man, and I'm actually going to get some money for this guy, you know, uh, for doing all these things. He'll never know he's actually giving the money to Spider-Man. Ha-ha! <laughs> so, yeah, just teen angsty stuff. <clears throat> anyway, so... Uh, he, he said, my one rule is, this is Parker, he says, my one rule is you can never ask me about how I get these pictures. J. Jonah doesn't care about that. He still always asks, how do you get these amazing pictures? He wants to know the secret. He can't live without knowing why. So that's why he, he hires Gargan, a private eye, to go and follow Parker and figure out how does he do all this stuff, right? So... That, that's what that was all about. But he brings Gargan in and says, listen, I'm going to pay you $10,000. Hey, back in the day, that was worth a lot of money, all right? Still worth a good amount, but not for doing super secret scientific experiments that are clearly going to mess with your brain. He was warned in advance. So J. Jonah Jameson and McGargan, Mac Gargan, go over to Dr. Farley Stillwell's uh, facility. He's the scientist that he was just reading about, changing the animal traits with other animal traits, just mixing them up, you know, mix and match, trying to basically a form of forced evolution, I guess. Anyway, so what he does is he says, listen, uh, I don't care about all your projects and all this stuff. I just want to know, would you be able to make a superhuman, all right? Case in point, could you make Gargan over here a superhuman? I paid him $10,000 so he would go undergo this experiment. I'm willing to pay you $10,000 also to do the experiment. Put your ethics aside, man. And, you know, uh, Farley, he's like, dude, uh, human experiments? That, that's not ethical at all. At the same time, I really need that money so I can continue with my experimentation. Ah, the... The pitfalls of being a scientist, right? Funding. Anyway, so I think that the uh, politicians run into the same problem, why they become corrupt. Funding from corporations. Now, each of them, the scientist and Gargan, are supposed to be paid uh, $10,000 each for their part in this experiment, right? The, the scientist, the doctor, and the, the guinea pig, right? So anyway... Um, Gargan does take the serum, uh, has his head shaved, and he undergoes these tests, uh, like he's being electrocuted and all this crazy stuff going on. And he's like, okay, so you will now have the proportional strength of a scorpion, basically. <laughs> Cute. At one point, um, uh, Peter Parker says, I've got the, the proportional strength of 10,000 or, or thousands of spiders. Like, come on, man. <laughs> it's not how that works. So anyway... With all this being said, uh, Gargan wants to be able to test his strength. So he's given a huge block, not even a slab, a block of granite. And he just pulls the whole thing apart with his bare hands. So he's given this suit to make him look a little bit more like a scorpion, to protect him a little bit more, and to hide his identity, I guess. And uh, Dr. Stilwell actually fashions a, uh, a tail, the very first tail the scorpion will use. There's no... There's no um, slicer on this. There's no stinger. There's no acid. There's no plasma blast. There's no concussive blast. There's no nothing. It's just a tail that can hit you really freaking hard. All right? Literally, he's almost no different from the lizard at this point. So anyway, they they get sent out. Uh, he's got to stay for a lot more testing. Joan, uh, J. Jonah Jameson is very serious about this. He's like, listen, if it's said that you got to stay for testing, then you need to stay for testing. No arguments with this. All right. So 
moving on with this, um, Ned Leeds, all right, is uh, basically this this reporter who's also working for the Bugle, and uh, Parker sees him as competition for Betty Brandt. Betty Brandt is actually, you know, she works there. Uh, she's like a secretary, and she is basically the first love interest of Peter Parker in the comics, all right? So we're going way back, <laughs> way back. So he's got a mission, uh, excuse me, a lead. Ned Leeds has a lead. Imagine that. And he gets an assignment to go out to Europe. Parker's kind of a jerk, man. He's kind of a jerk. He's like, you know, he Leeds seems like a really nice guy, but I kind of hope he stays out in Europe. <laughs> Like, come on, man. It's not as bad as saying, you know, like, oh, well, gee, Leeds is going on an assignment into frickin' Afghanistan. I hope he stays there. Because now you're talking about a dirt nap. So it's not the same, but still kind of messed up, right or wrong. So anyway, um, Spidey decides at this point, because you know, they go out to lunch together as he's about to go out to JFK to go out to Europe. So Parker decides uh, a little bit later, hey, listen, I'm going to go and pay a, a visit to jolly old uh, J. Jonah Jameson, because I need to see what's going on here, all right? I, um, what it is is that um, uh, when when Gargan got pulled back in, uh, before they went to Dr. Stilwell's place, Parker saw uh, Jameson and uh, Gargan coming out, and he heard Jameson call him Gargan, so he, so he knows something's going on. So he goes to investigate, and there's J. Jonah Jameson in his office being all cool, like, hey, Spidey, come on in, let's have a conversation, you're good people, yeah, let's talk. Spidey's like, oh, no, I don't need a spider sense to know that you're a loony bin, and you've got a trap set, so I'm out. As he goes out, he gets snuffed by the, um, the scorpion. He gets the holy hell beat out of him by the scorpion. I'm talking, it's literally just punch, 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 punch. Oh, here's a tail for you. Punch, punch, tail, sucker, gotcha. And just, he beats the crap out of him. I mean, like, the guy's practically bleeding spiders, right? Beats him up, throws him into a water tower or shed of some sort, just leaves him there unconscious. He's like, all right, man, flips off the world, flips off, um... What's his face? And, and here's the thing. Like, he's so powerful that Spider-Man webs him up at one point, And Jameson's staring on at this from his office. He can still see this. That's how close it is. And he's like, oh, no, he got caught by the webbing. Um, and, and this is actually the original scene that you see. If you've ever seen that old um, 60s Spider-Man, I think it was 1966, whatever it was, that 60s Spider-Man cartoon where you see Scorpion trying to wiggle out of the uh, the web. This is actually that scene. It's taken from, from here. Ditko's old art. Because, yeah, this is Stan Lee and uh, um, Steve Ditko on this. And um, just a real quick aside, very funny stuff in here. You know, Stan was always, a, is, was always a, a very jolly kind of person. You know what I'm saying? Um, he did have some of the J. Jonah Jameson qualities about him. Whatever, deal with it. But he he was, you know, always a pretty happy guy. He liked to, you know, make jokes and just be cool like that, you know? He was picked on when he first started in Marvel. Darn it if he's not going to, you know, try and have some fun with it now. So as dirty and stern as Steve Ditko was, Steve uh, eventually said, you know, how come your name always goes first? Why can't my name go first? So it's like, okay, fine. I'm going to put your name first on the uh, in, in the pages. Mind you, Stan was a cool guy. Nobody, nobody ever got letterer credit or any or inker's credit in a comic book before. It was always just the artist and the the writer, right? The writer first and then the artist. Traditionally, that's how it was. Stanley's the one who brought in that the inker and the um, the letterer always get credit for what they did. Also, so there's that. Anyway, he always kept with the tradition of the writer first and then the the artist. So anyway, he had some fun with. He's like, okay, fine. I'm gonna, and he actually writes in there. I'm gonna let you know, uh, Steve Ditko go first. So he puts Steve Ditko there. Underneath that, much bigger and colored in red. He's like Stan Lee. <laughs> so little Steve Ditko, big Stan Lee. He did allow Ditko to go first. It's just, it was funny. It's just, it's funny. The reader sees that, and we laugh our butts off. You know, Steve Ditko didn't doesn't, to this day, still doesn't have a very good humor. He's a little bit younger than Stan Lee. He's still alive, too. He's just a recluse. Um, does not have a good sense of humor. So he just, he, I'm sure he didn't like that at all. I wasn't actually there to see the reaction. But man, to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> so anyway, 
Um, he literally, like his, they originally said that his fingers were like pincers, you know what I'm saying? So he was able to cut through the webbing, not the case. In fact, he's actually just that strong that, um, when Spider-Man's webbing first goes on you, and this is even to this day, his, his regular webbing first goes on you. If you're as strong as Spider-Man, you might be able to rip it off. Okay, but once it sets in, and it only takes like a couple of seconds to set in, once it does set in though, you've got to be like as strong as the thing to be able to rip out of that webbing, or a little stronger. So there's that, (laughs) all right? That's how strong the webbing is, but it does have that first couple of seconds that if you get it off right away, you can actually rip it off. And Gargan was able to just rip it off. Not only just rip it off, he throws it back at Spidey, and it's all tangled and whatnot, so even if he can resist it with his molecular composition, forget about it, he gets tangled up in it, um, Scorpion just knocks him on his butt, <laughs> knocks him into a, looks like a water tower of some sort, anyway, he's out for the count, genuinely out for the count, he's actually unconscious, not even seeing, he's not even awake to see the stars, he's out, so Gargan is like, you know, I'm, I'm going to go out and have some fun now. And he goes and he, uh, you know, Jameson tries to call him back in. You know, you're a hero now, son. And he's like, Psh, screw you. And he starts thinking to himself, I'm so powerful that I could beat Spider-Man. I'm more powerful than everybody right now. And I'm going to go. And why should I, I have to ask people for money? I'm going to take money. So, of course, it's New York City in the Marvel Universe. So here's an armor vehicle driving by. I mean, every couple of seconds they drive by in the Marvel Universe, right? So he jumps down there. He rips the thing open, takes out some uh, famous expensive gems, puts it on the back of his tail, starts climbing a building. Now, while all of this crazy stuff is happening, uh, Dr. Stillwell is doing, you know, running some more experiments. He's like, oh, my God, what have I done? This guy's brain is going to keep on devolving, all right, until he gets to, like, pure evil animalistic uh, intent. So I've got an anti-scorpion person serum. Let's see if I can get to him in time. He goes up, and he's like, hey, man, you know, can you can you take this? Because, please. And he's like, nope. He's like, I'm not going to kill you because you're good people, but I would kill you. You know what I'm saying? So why don't you just go away? So he starts climbing the building. Forget that. The doctor starts climbing the building too, one-handed, because he's got the giant uh, uh, flask of of junk, you know, the anti-serum, to go up and uh, to, to, to help him out. He's climbing up the building. Once he gets up to around the third store, he actually falls off. Now he throws the serum, hoping you no know, one last-ditch effort. If he can at least hit the scorpion, you know, it should be able to do something. He misses, and he actually falls to his death. Yep, dies. Um, Gwen Stacy was not the first. <laughs> So he falls off the building and he dies. Spider-Man has no idea who this cat was. So he's just like, hey, I don't know who that guy was, but you're going to pay for it. Starts pounding the crap out of him. Doesn't even hurt. (laughs) Gargan's not affected. And he punches uh, Spider-Man so hard he actually hurts his hand. Knocks Spidey out again. Knocks him out. I mean, I just want to see Chris Tucker on top of him. You got knocked the hell out. (laughs) I know how it really went. Anyway. So now he decides, I'm going to go after J. Jonah Jameson himself because, yeah. And uh, J.J. Jameson throws Betty out of the room. Betty Branch throws her out of the room. She's thinking, he's my hero. He no hero. He even says flat out, well, in his mind, he's like, oh, no, Gargan's going to wind up letting something slip, and I don't need any witnesses around. <laughs> so, so he's like, you're crazy, man. What's the matter with you? Spider-Man comes jumping in the window. Yeah, round three. And this time, he, he realized that he can't go toe-to-toe. With this guy now he's hurt spidey is hurt he knows if he gets hit one more time that's it he's probably not going to get back up like ever so he's like okay i'm just not going to let you hit me he's like you could be as tough as you want but if you can't hit me and i'm the only one landing blows eventually you're going to go down so the first, one of the first things he does is he rips off the tail he's like now we're even tough guy and he's able to keep you know weaving dodging rope a dope and just not rope a dope because he can't get hit anymore and he he winds up hitting him enough gargan enough that mac winds up falling over unconscious himself all right so spidey's got the upper hand here um the doctor is dead there's no way to reverse this stuff um eventually later on you'd realize that if um, Gargan doesn't have that scorpion suit on, he will die. He will actually die because the serum, that's what it did to him. Uh, he'd eventually realize that the venom suit would also protect him from dying. <laughs> so you catch an awful case of death. 
Anyway, uh, Spidey goes off, uh, and he's he's hurt, man. Like his by the next day, he's already got scabs covering his cuts, and you know he he but he's still bruised up. He's scarred. He's hurting bad. But he goes to school anyway. Flash Thompson makes fun of him. Spidey actually is about to lose his cool at this point. He's like, "Bring it on." Flash is like, what, so I can hit you and then I get blamed for all those scars on you? Nah, Parker, I'm going to knock you for a, for a wallop one of these days, but it ain't going to be on your terms. Man, this is some good writing. I don't care who's credited with writing. This is some good writing. Anyways, he goes home and there's May, uh, Aunt May, and no, she's not as hot as Marissa Tomei, but, you know, she's Aunt May. Uh, good enough for Dr. Octopus. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, she's, you know, Licking his wounds, basically putting like some hydrogen peroxide on there, whatever ants, old ants do. Anyway, so, and that's pretty much that. Um, actually, uh, what's his name? J. Jonah Jameson gets branded a hero because, well, it's his newspaper. <laughs> so he gets branded a hero. He's not feeling bad about what he did anymore. He did it first, but once he realized he doesn't get caught, he's like, Psh, I'm going to take out Spider-Man. It's going to happen. Believe that. So we can see clearly here that Spider-Man's greatest arch nemesis is technically J. Jonah Jameson. All the things that Spider-Man would do, you know what I'm saying, or excuse me, that J. Jonah Jameson would do, and then get away with it, and then keep coming back at him. Man, like all the other guys, like the Scorpion, the Rhino, Doc Ock, Vulture, you name them, they all eventually got captured and sent to jail, you know? So, I... And here's J. Jonah Jameson. Dude eventually becomes mayor of New York City. I say here and now, I don't know if I'm the first person to say it, but I'm saying it now. The greatest enemy in Spider-Man's rogues gallery is J. Jonah Jameson. That's it. I said it. It's done. It's on record. Anyway, that's really it for the first appearance of um, the Scorpion. Uh, eventually, you know, not too much would really happen with Scorpion. Eventually, the uh, one of the coolest things besides getting the Venom symbiote is that eventually he would go up against Superior Spider-Man, which is, excuse me, who is Dr. Octopus in Peter Parker's body. Parker slash Doc Oct, uh, Oct, uh, Otto Octavius punched Gargan in the jaw so hard he actually thought he killed him. He actually shattered his jaw so badly he actually needs uh, an implant to fix his jaw. I think they were supposed to actually do something with that where he would have a tough mandible bite. <laughs> Never actually uh, panned out that I'd seen at least. But um, it's unknown if he still has that in the comics today after the whole battle world and secret war uh, thing. But it's safe to assume he might. He might. Uh, either way, that was a, that was an interesting aspect of his character. All that aside, guys, that is the first appearance of Mac or McDonald Gargan, aka the Scorpion, aka Spider-Man Venom ish, <laughs> in the Dark Reign under Norman Osborn. And that's really all I got for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Go, don't forget to check out uh, Scorpion. Explain in a minute, guys. Make sure you stay for the end credits of Spider-Man Homecoming. That's all I'm saying. Don't be a, don't be a tool. All right, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, class dismissed.